And then the judgment will begin and the scales will be set up. The same scales, scales like the scales that you see inside the supermarkets when they weigh bananas and fruit. Same kind of scales. Only this day, it will not be bananas and fruit. It will be deeds. Because that's all we have as human beings to offer that day. Deeds. That's the whole purpose of our life. To do deeds. To perform. See what the tongue says. See what the private parts do. See what the hands do. See where the legs and the feet, where they go to. See what the mind, see what the eyes see. See what the mind feels and thinks. See what the heart, what kind of emotions it holds. And what's the final result? On that day, the deeds will be laid out. The Prophet ﷺ said, the human beings will be resurrected all together. Men, women, jinn, shaitan, neen, shayateen, beads and birds, birds and beasts. He said, they will be naked, uncircumcised, and barefooted. They will be hungry and their stomachs burning. The sun will be over their heads about the distance of a mile. Can you imagine the earth being about a mile from the sun? They will have hot wind blowing in their faces because the doors of hell will be opened up. Now if anybody's getting a little restless here and you think you need a, one of them little bags that they give you on the plane or you need, a, uh, you need some uh, Panadol or something to hold you down, then let us know. Because I know most of us, we didn't think about this scenario, and I'm telling you again, this is not a movie. I'm not trying to get no Oscar up here. This is scripture, giving you the chance to consider. They will sweat until their sweat will produce rivers up to their knees, their waist, their shoulders, and some people up to their noses in their own sweat. They will cry tears until the tears create a flood, but it won't matter. And when they cannot cry anymore, they will then cry blood. They will be shouting screaming like animals, making sounds like animals being slaughtered. But Allah will not listen to them because this is a day when which was announced to them. They will have their flesh burned from the hellfire and it will smell like rotten corpse. And they will ask, they will see the prophet Adam will be there and other prophets will be there and they will be asking those prophets, look, I knew about you, can you help me out that, this day? They will be stacked up like sticks and they will have no place to stand on. Everybody will be trying to find some place to stand. They will be suffering that day so much that they will ask God, oh God, please relieve us of this suffering, just throw us in hell. Not realizing, that the fire of hell will be a million times hotter than the place that they're standing. This will only be the beginning of the day of judgment. If this is only the beginning of the judgment, let me just summarize to tell you what the end of the judgment. For those whose scales are light in good deeds, Their resting place inevitably will be the hellfire. Punishments that you cannot imagine. And you may say to, to me, well, this sounds like a dream. I don't believe that. Well, you don't believe that you're going to die. You can't even imagine that. You can't imagine the grave. You can't imagine while you were in your mother's womb. You can't imagine before that. 
yet all those scenarios were realities for you to get here. And all of those are realities for you to leave here. And certainly, this issue of judgment is a matter of scripture. Every prophet of God told the people about this scenario. And all I'm doing to you, for you brothers and sisters is reminding you about this scenario. All of us are going to die. All of us are going to the grave. All of us are going to be judged. And all of us will wind up in one or two destinations. No one wants to be in a predicament. No one wants to go to jail, not even for a day. Certainly no one wants to go to jail for life. And even if you went to jail for life, what is it, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, in an air-conditioned prison, watching cable TV, eating three meals a day of the taxpayer's dollars, playing basketball or rugby or whatever they do in jail? For the prison of hell, there won't be no TV. There won't be no three meals. There won't be no air conditioning. There will be the recompense of your deeds and your rejection of the Almighty. Now I'm not the one to say that if you don't believe in God, I'm not the one to say if you're not a Muslim, I'm not the one to say if you're a Christian or a Jew or a Buddhist or a Hindu or whatever, I'm not the one to say who's going to hell and who's not because I don't have any guarantee myself. But I am only a warner to say to you so certainly you're going to answer for what you did on this earth with the gifts that you were given. Don't be caught by surprise and don't be in a situation that you were warned, you were told and on that day you deny and you lie and you say that you didn't know. Because in case you didn't realize it, if you didn't know before you came here, you know now. Now lie to yourself if you want to and dream about it. And keep this in mind. Each one of you only have a number of days or months or years before the reality of death comes to you. Some of us that are sitting here right now, a month from now, we may not be here. A year from now, we may not be here. Certainly, many of us, 10 years from now, will not be here. What's the saying of the Boy Scouts? Who knows? What's their major, what the Boy Scouts say? What is their two words they always say? Huh? Be prepared. Every one of us, if we're taking a trip, going to pack the bags and try to have everything in that bag that we need. Isn't that true? It is the nature of human beings that if they know where they're headed, they want to be prepared. How many people here believe within themselves that they understand the purpose of life? and that they also are convinced about the tools of success towards that purpose. How many people here honestly can say that? That's not a significant number. It means that most of us, one thing I say, you're honest. That's good to be honest, but it's not good to be lost. And it's not good for you to be a mature human being on the way to death unprepared so I tell you every major trip every major journey starts with what what does it start with one step you got a smart man back there one step the first step I suggest for all of us is that we acknowledge that there is a benefactor for this life. 
if you have any power over yourself, any power over anything, stop blinking right now. Don't blink. Just don't blink. Or just don't think. Stop the thinking processes. Stop the heart from beating. Stop the kidneys from functioning. Stop the lungs from going up and down in the diaphragm. Just stop everything. You cannot. It means we're all subject. Are we all on the same page? So the third step, after acknowledging there's a benefactor, a supreme power, and the second step, that that supreme power definitely, there cannot be anyone, any other power worthy of our attention, our subordination, and thirdly, that if there is a power, there is a law, then you and I should be willing, grateful, prepared to submit and acclimate ourselves to it. Those three statements is the same statement that we as Muslims say when we say La ilaha illallah. So non-Muslims, my proposition to you is that you should acknowledge this person as you acknowledge yourself, as you acknowledge your father. Your battery is now fully charged. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, and seekers after truth, our esteemed, respected guests, we appreciate so much your indulgence. Uh, that young lady that asked um, to accept Islam, if you want to accept Islam right now, you can come forward. Who's the young lady? I have witnessed myself accepting Islam out of the, out of the nearly 7,000 people that I have seen personally accept Islam. I will say to you that 65 or 70 percent were women. We want to say to you that one of the benefits of becoming Muslim is that if there's something you owed God, something you did in your lives that only you know and God knows, today it's forgiven, it's finished. You start with a clean slate with God. But if you owe somebody money, you still got to pay that. God can't forgive debts that you owe other people, you see? So we want you to be sincere. The whole thing about Islam is don't think that you got to flip overnight and tomorrow you got to start following all the rules. It's, it's not like that. You're not going to change overnight, but use your sincerity. Be sincere towards God. Start to learn, start to read, start making the changes in your life. And use your own intelligence to determine whether your family, your colleagues, your neighbors, your friends, how you want to deal with that. But keep this in mind, thousands of us met the same challenges, and you'll come through them also, okay? May Allah bless all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.